Hello and welcome to today's daily devotional where we concentrate on a time of prayer with our God. There is a concept in the kingdom of God about sowing and reaping. And it is you reap what you sow. Now, if you look up the dictionary, um, the uh, meaning of this in the dictionary, it ha- always to me has a bit of a negative con- connotation about it. It talks about that reaping what you sow is that there's consequences to your action. That if you are mean, you will receive meanness. If you are negative, negativity will come to you. There's consequences of the actions that you do, the actions by yourself, by your language, by your how you live, what you say, what you do. But there's also the positive aspect of it, that I will reap what I sow. If I sow in kind, being kind, I will get kindness in return. If I am generous, I will receive generosity from others and from God. It is a principle of God's kingdom and it's actually a principle that's in nature. If I reap, if I sow into soil and fertilize it and look after it, I will reap a good harvest. But if I don't sow into that soil and keep taking and taking and taking, eventually there will be no harvest because there's no nutrition left in that soil for the crop to even grow. And we're going to talk about it in, in regards to prayer. Um, you know, you experience things of God and sometimes um, you, well, you have the knowledge of learning about it in scripture and in the wisdom of people that have gone before you. But you also learn from your own experiences. You know, you you are brought up to be kind and generous, but not everyone works out like that or they um, have a bad experience and so therefore they withhold that generosity and maybe become mean and meanness is just given to you in return. Because people don't want to be kind to a mean person but they are drawn to or naturally want to be kind to someone who is kind to them. But in faith, when we pray about it, if if we are faithful, then faithfulness is a promise that God, he says he will give us anyway. He is faithful even if no one is faithful to him. But faithfulness, favour will come back upon us. If we um, live life with joy, joyfulness, will come to us. We will be more joy filled because of the joy that we sow into our life. Um, when when um, the people of Israel were waiting so long because Moses had gone up to the mountain to pray and to actually receive the Ten Commandments from God, and they decided that, that Moses possibly had left them, that they got all their gold together and they um, melted it down and made a golden calf and they uh, worshipped this calf. This was this calf, this gold was now their God. And that angered God because, um, you know, no, he said, you will worship no other gods but me. He was so angry. And in Hosea chapter 8, verse 7, it states it like this. And it's the same reaping and sowing. He said that you... You um, wanted the wind, but you reaped a whirlwind. They wanted to change things because they couldn't see Moses wasn't there anymore. Maybe God had left them because Moses was representing representative of God. He was the one who told them, God's told me to come and get you out of Egypt. They kept complaining, complaining people. So they were always complaining, never grateful. So what happens is they actually received more ungratefulness or complaints or problems to make them even more complaining. 
They couldn't see the joy, the sustenance, the provision of God. But it says they wanted, they wanted the wind. They sowed in the wind. They wanted the change. And what they reaped back was a whirlwind. It was so dynamic. It affected them so much that what happened was they didn't receive the promise of going into the promised land. They wandered in the desert for so 40 years till all of the complainers had died out and the new generation walked into the promised land. But it says better, explains it better in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. Don't be deceived. This is a rule of the kingdom. God will not be mocked, meaning you can't say that's not true, that won't work, it doesn't happen. It is true and it will happen. The promise is if you reap, you will reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life from the spirit. Why do I bring this up? Because our prayer is a spiritual thing. It's our personal relationship with God. We can have communal prayer where it's a community of people praying, but generally our prayer is just me and God. And it's me, my true me, my spiritual me, me inside praying to God. It is the spirit praying, praising God, adoring God, petitioning to God, asking God, sharing with God, loving God. Because prayer has so many aspects. As you, as you sort of have seen over the weeks, it's not just one thing of ask, 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 ask. There's so many aspects to prayer. And let me state it again, and it's so beautiful. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the spirit, and that's what we're doing when we pray, we're sowing to the spirit, our spirit to God's spirit. You will reap eternal life from the spirit. The God, God has already said, if you believe in Jesus Christ and say he is Lord and Savior, you will have eternal life. But we will reap greater and more eternal life from the spirit if we actually sow to the spirit into our spirit into God's spirit so that's what we're doing when we pray we're sowing our spirit into God's spirit we we can't do it only God can but he unifies us he makes us one because that's what he wanted right from the beginning you are my sons and daughters. You are part of my family. You are me. You are part of me. We are precious to him. We are the love of his life. He can truly look down the barrel. Just like I'm looking down the barrel of the camera right now. He can look down the barrel of looking at us and saying, You are precious to me. You are the love of my life. And when he says that to you, he says it to the next person and to the next person. It is truth because God has a heart that can say that honestly, truthfully, 100% total love for each person. Whereas we, 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 we sort of can divide ourselves up a bit because we're not pure and we're not totally holy. We're not totally wholesome. But God is. So when we pray right now, we're sowing our spirits into God's spirit. We're going to reap a wonderful reward, whatever that reward might be. Now, the ultimate reward is eternal life with Christ. But the reward in our own lives by our praying for us, for our needs, for others, for the world, adoring the Lord, loving the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Oh, what what reaping we can get from all of that they're all wonderful gifts and graces from the lord so let us as we pray right now 
as we pray for our needs on the prayer wall, as we pray for uh, words that we don't even express sometimes, but we know is in our spirit. Know that we're sowing our spirit into God's spirit, where they will become one. We ask for the will of God. Lord, if it is your will, but it's our wills will become one. What we pray, we don't have to say if it's your will, Lord, because we'll know the Lord's will. Because we've been with him. That's what the saints talk about. They've been with him. And so their holiness, his holiness rubs up onto them. And so they become holy. They don't do it themselves. It's God who does it in them. So let us bring our prayers to our God and let us sow so that we will reap in this life and in the next. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Father, what an awesome dynamic promise that we will reap what we sow. Well, right now, Lord, we're sowing into our prayer with you. We're sowing into our spirits, joining with your spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, open our hearts. Holy Spirit, enlighten our minds. Send us your grace, your wisdom, your guidance. We put before you our personal petitions. They are written on the prayer wall. They are written in our hearts. They are written in our lives. We have so many needs personally with our own ourselves and our family and friends. But Lord, the world needs you. Holy Spirit, would you come? Holy Spirit, come. May we join with you in loving others. Give us courage to love others. Give us courage to love our enemies. O oh Lord God, the world needs you. The world needs your love. The world needs your spirit, your saving grace that your son Jesus sent for us, for all of us. So we put our petitions before you. We give you our family and friends, ourselves that need you, Lord. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, come upon all these prayers. Holy Spirit, come upon our lives. Soften our hearts more. Turn our hearts more towards the love of God, towards God who is love. And we ask all of this in the mighty name of our saving Son, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So know every time we pray, which is any conversation we have with God, we are sowing into something way greater and we will reap this reward in time. If we don't see it now, we definitely will see it in eternity. Have a blessed day and I'll see you next week.